Thank you. You know, I, uh, I'm at an age in life now where uh, it, it, I don't stay up all night very often. <laughs> but I got to say that uh, tonight was definitely worthwhile. It was definitely worth staying up all night. Uh, and as I was standing there watching the president a few minutes ago, I had sort of a flood of memories that came back to me about the last campaign, the 08 campaign. And I remember very distinctly where I was four years ago at this time. I was in Grant Park, Chicago. It was an unusually warm November evening. There with 250,000 people waiting for President-elect Obama to come out and address the American public. And it was a moment that I will never forget. There was a, a, an interesting sequence of events that night. First, John McCain came out and gave, as you heard Governor Romney did a few minutes ago, a very elegant and gracious concession speech. And at that time, the the venue just erupted. People were um, elated. They were dancing. They were screaming. They were celebrating uh, the election of our first African-American president. And after that, there was sort of an eerie calm. It got quiet. And I'll never forget, I turned around and I, and I looked back at the crowd. And everyone was sobbing, tears of joy tears of elation, but also a sense that a burden from the nation had been lifted with the election of our first African-American president. Uh, for me, that election was deeply personal. As many of you know, uh, my wife and I, Deborah, working for the election of then Senator Barack Obama, was very personal for us because our eight-year-old son at the time was also very engaged in the election. And we wanted to demonstrate to him that he could grow up in America where he could be anything he wants to be. When Barack Obama was elected president, he smashed one of the last glass ceilings in America. And it lifted a burden from the nation. In many ways, those tears in Grant Park four years ago were a recognition that America will never be the same again. And now, four years later, with the re-election of Barack Obama, the nation is even more changed. Nobody talks about Barack Obama as the first African-American president much anymore. He's our president. And you know, a lot will be written about this election, about how um, all sorts of records were broken, six billion dollars of money spent on this election. Um, there'll be a lot of written about uh, how the internet and big data changed this election. But one of the things that I think hasn't been talked about very much is the fact that this is the first time we've had a presidential election in which it was impossible to vote for a candidate for president or vice president who was not white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. We have an African-American candidate, a Mormon, two Catholics. It's an amazing thing. Our country has changed. So I look forward very much later today to going home and greeting my son when he gets home from school and telling him, his name is Robert, telling him, you know, Robert, four years ago, I told you that you too can be elected president of the United States. This afternoon, I'm going to tell him, you can be elected president twice in the United States of America. <laughs> And that's going to be a great thing.
So, like our president said earlier today, he's inspired, he's redoubling his commitment uh, to work on behalf of the American people and people around the world, and I feel the same way. Uh, when I stood in Grant Park four years ago, I would have never thought that my next presidential election would be spent here in Brussels as the U.S. Ambassador to the EU, a job that I love and that I feel so privileged to have the opportunity to serve in. And tonight I feel uh, overwhelmed, not only with the, the joy of what uh, happened today in our country, but also uh, with a sense that we can now continue the wonderful work that we're doing with the EU, with Europe, our closest ally on the planet. So thank you all for, for being here tonight, this morning, and let's continue our important work together. Thank you.